Florence Nightingale said, I attribute my success to this. I never gave or took an excuse. Do you know that failure is one of the main reasons why people make excuses? Which do you think is worse, to fail or to back up the failure with a stupid excuse? Nigeria is experiencing the most spectacular failure of government in her history. And the government is given the most diabolical reasons for its failure. The failure of this government is such that the only logical reason one can think of is wickedness. How do you explain that more schools in the north are closing every day? More students are being kidnapped. More people are being displaced. More people are being slaughtered. And yet, all the president can think of is how to allocate land to foreign terrorists, who he calls headsmen. How do you explain that the Naira is at 547 to the dollar? The sad thing about the failure of this government is that Nigerians are institutionalizing failure in their DNA. Some might think that if a government can fail this badly, maybe it's okay for them to fail and settle for failure. Maybe it's okay to make failure a permanent abode. Maybe it's okay to make excuses a hobby. This is what happens when a people start accepting the most ridiculous situations as normal. As Yoshua approached Jerusalem, the atmosphere was electrifying. He could feel the sense of heightened expectations and excitement from his disciples who believed the world was about to end and the kingdom of God would immediately appear. Then Christ, seeing their ignorance, told them the parable of a nobleman who went on a journey to get himself a kingdom and before leaving left his ten servants with ten pounds. After obtaining the kingdom, he returns and demands an account from his servants on what they had done with the pounds he gave them. The first simply said, Lord, the one pound has gained ten pounds. And the master says, For your faithfulness you will now govern ten cities. The second servant again simply says, Master, your one pound gained five pounds. And the master replies that for your faithfulness you will govern five cities. Then the third servant appears before him and the following interaction occurs. Lord, below, here is thy pound which I have kept laid up in a napkin. For I fear thee, because thou art an austere man. Thou takest up, thou layest not down, and repest thou didst not so. And he said unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an austere man, taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not so. Wherefore then givest not thou my money into the bank? that at my coming might have required mine own with usury. And he said unto them that stood by, Take from him the pound, and give it to him that had ten pounds. What you may not have noticed is that this failure of a servant talked the most, and he started by blaming the master, who not only gave him a job, but gave him the opportunity to do something more. The master was livid, and not only told him off, but took the one pound, and gave it to the servant who had ten pounds. Does this bad servant not sound like Lai Muhammad in the type of crazy excuses he gives? What about you though? What are the excuses you are making today? I don't have money. Some of the most successful people in the world today came out of poverty. Oprah Winfrey, Leonardo DiCaprio, Tony Lumelu, Jim Ovia to mention a few. I am too old. Mandela came out of prison, an old man, won an election and ruled South Africa with wisdom. Alfred Hitchcock did the finest work of his life in his 50s and 60s. Colonel Sanders, who created Kentucky Fried Chicken, was 65 years old when he sold his first restaurant and began developing the KFC franchise. I don't have enough time. Really? You make time for what you deem important. Evaluate how you allocate this precious resource called time and you'll discover what's important to you. We always make time for what's important to us. Ask those who watch Big Brother. You cannot live a life of excuses like the Nigerian government. The nobleman said to his servants, Occupy till I come. But what's interesting is that before he said occupy, he gave them money in hand to use to occupy. God has given each one of us something. It could be a talent, a gift, an opportunity, a relationship, a knowledge, a situation, you name it but he gave everyone something so that you may occupy your space on earth and advance his kingdom. How well are you occupying your space? 
How have you advanced his kingdom? Are you planning to do a lie and give him excuses when he comes? That will be a tragedy. You must occupy, dominate and defend your time, space and position while here on earth. You must be fruitful and multiply whatsoever he has deposited on your inside so that his kingdom grows. No excuses whatsoever. Blaming your boss, colleagues, church, family, friends or government won't be accepted. His question will be short and your answer simple. Did you occupy? What's your answer? God bless you all.